Linda, and welcome to Panavision, the Todo Soul Flow podcast that brings you all local stories, news, and music with your favorite hosts, Annette and DJ Kaele, the <laughs> co-founders of Panamia Club. That's so funny. All right. Panamia <laughs> Club is a collective that's making supporting local creatives and entrepreneurs as easy as getting caught in the rain this summer. Um, every episode, we're going to bring you a locally based Pana doing amazing things in their community. And then we'll also bring you a, an artist that's going to talk about their music. This is our first show of season two. So, you Hello. know, welcome back to us. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and we decided to make it a fun one. So we'll be speaking to Sergio from Magic City Comedy, and he's actually the very first comedian that we have on our directory. And we're going to be talking about SoFlo comedy in, uh, in, in the South Florida, right? Yeah. And, uh, and breaking the Miami party siri city narrative. Yes, and then afterwards, we're going to be talking with our friend Max Harrison, from the Waxworms yes. about uh, yeah their journey as an indie band here in Miami, and um, his new signal yeah single it was it's nice yeah and I his love it. and his marketing they're really great out there. Um, but anyway, first before all that, how are you doing, Annette? I am good. <laughs> yeah, I am good. I feel like I've been running around all week. I just started a new job, um, but I'm so I got my paycheck today, my first paycheck. So. There's that going for me and the the podcast. So I'm feeling good, honestly. It's it's a good day. That's and good. I wanna I wanna shout out, of course, the new panas that joined us this week. And we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're actually gonna group them by kind of like different categories. So I'm gonna start with creatives. So first up, we have Spell, which is a DJ. They um, characterize themselves as chaotic, fun, freeing, releasing, and black. Then we have Arco Iris Art an artist that hopes to create meaningful and thought-provoking artworks that bridge gaps between individuals and cultures. Then we have Into the Brightness, which, shout out, they are going to be one of our bands at an event that we have on the 29th, so y'all definitely look out uh, for that. They are a South Florida shoegaze noise rock alternative rock band, and I have heard their stuff is actually pretty good. <laughs> Bami Pokes, a machine and hand poke tattoo artist specializing in fine line graphic and fun designs. Then we have Elijah Joaquin, a photographer. After the Sunset, a Miami-based local band that plays a variety of music from indie classic and alternative rock. We have Kami Siren, and uh, she basically puts up these really cool photo booths uh, during events where people can kind of like take pictures and they have like souvenirs with them. Then we have Maqueda and Musa. They are DJ, an artist based in Miami, and they produce right songs as well as DJ various genres such as Saka House, Reggae Dub, and Piano, Afrobeat, Hip Hop, and more. And then lastly, we have Friends of the Podcast, Friends of, well, really my cousin, so family, right? We have Oro Fresco, <laughs> finally signed up. Love, thank you for joining thank the directory. You, yes. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yes. And then now we're on to small businesses. So we have Closet Charming. They're an online boutique offering trendy, affordable, accessible uh, pieces. And they're based right here in Miami. We also have Your Empanadas. They're uh, delicious Colombian empanadas experimenting with different empanada fillings. And I'm really excited about this one because I think a good empanada can cure anything. Right. That's, Agreed. That's all you need. Really. Agreed. Yeah. And then also really cool name, Sudsation Soaps. So... They're also <laughs> sensation soaps. I love them. so creative, handmade, natural, eco-friendly soaps, and they're based out of Homestead, Florida. And next up, we have organizations. So we have the Underground Miami. You guys might have heard of them before. They're basically like a platform that promotes local events, local artists in South Florida. And next up, this is really cool. We have the Vinyl Social Club. Thank you all for joining. Yeah. They are, uh, basically they describe themselves like this. Think karaoke, but for record heads. They bring in turntables and mixers and offer anyone a chance to sign up to be a, a DJ at the venue for 30 minutes. So, That's I mean, cool. DJ I like Kyle, location. you should. <laughs> More on that later. <laughs> um, and then lastly, we have a MAPA member. We have Salamander Miami. Salamander is a space committed to generating a positive social impact by engaging audiences with Ur urging topics from underrepresented voices and relevant current events. So they work a lot with a lot of our panas and 
and like uh, Igor is having his release party there. So if you haven't heard of them, check it out. Absolutely. And that puts us at 285 fanas, you guys. That's I a mean, lot. I mean, we're almost at 300. We are. Yeah. We got a couple more days. We, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And yep. that's significant uh, for reasons that we will explain later. Later on. Yep. Uh, but yes, thank you for everyone. Thank you, everyone who has signed up already. Uh, and, and I get really, really excited when we get an email notification. Um, and we're just thrilled. Um, but if you haven't signed up, it's really easy to join. Um, all you have to do is fill out a form. If you need that form, please DM us. We'll send it your way. We're really looking to uh, expand. So getting a lot of people like uh, in the service industries um, and also outside of Miami. So if you know businesses in Broward or even West Palm Beach, Palm Beach County, um, Paramia Club, you know, services, the regional local Florida scene, South Florida scene. So definitely tell them to sign up. And then lastly, thank you so much to our developers. As always. Jen and Jeremy for helping us create that directory that we all would like to use every single day to find <laughs> local things. Um, and then also, huge thank you to our friends, Rogue Apothecary, who is helping us uh, put this show together. Yeah, David is behind the camera right now, scrolling for us. So thank you so much. Rogue Apothecary is, it, they offer um, herbs, tinctures, pre-rolls, um, And if you, you really it. need it, last minute teleprompting services. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and they also do custom orders. Yeah, they do, they do a lot. They, so, do, they so do it all, yeah. they do it all, folks. Definitely, definitely <laughs> reach out to them. Rogue Apothecary, based out of Miami Lakes. And of course, it's o important to stay educated on all the new panas that we come into our directory, mm -hmm. but it's also important to stay al tanto of the things that are happening in the community. Luckily, Gladi and I are here to catch you up on lo que está pasando in SoFlow with our segment, Meanwhile, Meanwhile in SoFlow. So oh, wow, that's like the second time. Yeah, I'm trying. So first up, we have Bootleggers Library is celebrating their 11th anniversary at the Underline in Brickell, featuring Caribbean Jazz Gaze by Seafoam Walls. You can go for free, and it starts right after this podcast. So like, finish listening to the podcast first, and then you can go to Bookleggers Anniversary. <laughs> or if you're far away, maybe listen to it on in your on, car on the way there. On the way there. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, also, if you saw the Barbie movie yet, or if you haven't, and you have FOMO, and you want to go into a Barbie universe, our Bana, Let's Shake Miami, is putting on a four-day event um, called Barbie Dream Weekend. So, let me tell you what that means. Um, <laughs> Because it's a lot. They got a burlesque show, a brunch, a foam pool party. They have a competition for, to see who is the best Barbie and Ken. Um, so, yeah, it sounds incredible. They have an amazing lineup of musicians, like local talent, local vendors. It's going to be really cool. So definitely make your way over there if you want that sort of weekend. That sounds amazing mm -hmm. yeah and then next we up we have easy peasy tattoos and soiree our mm -hmm. good fan as easy peasy tattoos you might remember them from our third episode mm -hmm. i think when we came and interviewed Second. them well they're having a show called fairy house including other fan of friends such as pique eats le poodle and more so we are so happy to shout them out of course and it's going to be like right here in little river tomorrow on sunday so if you're looking for a really chill sunday with the fanas definitely drop by that is such a cool space too yeah it really is easy peasy is like is really cute guys. It's so cute <laughs> it's so cute um also happening tomorrow so this is a very packed weekend um also happening tomorrow this is at the viscaya um like uh the market at viscaya um they're having raw figs is hosting a figure drawing class that's focused on puerto rican cultivation so that sounds really interesting definitely want to go to that and our friend goon green is going to be playing starting at noon so nice. from noon to one catch catch shout goon out green. to goon green yes <laughs> and <then laughs> Goon Green, friends of the podcast and MCR. And then also, this little tidbit of news. I just found out, I've been driving by the, these cement figures in Wynwood for so long, and I was like, what is this? Turns out, it's an arch. We're going to get... You don't arch say. Yeah, they're going to be arches here in for Miami. For what? What, are, what do they do? For aesthetic purposes. As we, aesthetic. aesthetic purposes. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, there no function whatsoever. Just really pretty arches. Uh huh. Okay. Uh huh. How much is gonna cost us? I think it was like two billion dollars. Two billion dollars. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, know, it sounds about right. Yeah. I mean, healthcare. Who's That's n- transportation. Housing what? what? <laughs> we need arches. So in Panamia Club News, our first show at Dear Eleanor is next Saturday, y'all, okay? July 29th. Don't miss Piñagria. It's Don't literally, it. it's going to be so fun. It's inspired by the Puerto Rican saying, La Piña Está Agria. Uh, and we're partnering with the Florida Immigrant Coalition to raise awareness of the asinine immigration laws that are prompting workers to leave produce to lot in the fields all over Florida. So we have an incredible lineup of first and second generation immigrants artists and vendors like musicians Oro Fresco, La Máquina del Flow, Still Blue, and uh, vendors like Cuerpo Miami, Empanadas, and then there's also going to be like a dancer. Her name is Nicole Pedraza, and she's going to be leading a movement workshop, y'all, during the event. It's like, it's packed. It's packed. <laughs> so tickets are on Shotgun for $15 to $25, depending on the sort of like package you want to go for. Yes, and also, are you interested in helping us grow our directorio and also just connect more with the, the local scene here in South Florida? Um, we've actually put together a package of memberships that include exclusive access to content and whatnot. We're rolling out a, member st- a member subscription program called Gente de Pana. So this is for people who like uh, want to support us but maybe don't have a business, don't have a way to really connect, don't have a way to sign up. Um, you can definitely still be part of, of this movement, of this collective, um, definitely can help out. We have a lot of different needs. So um, definitely check that out. Memberships are as, as low as like $5. Um, so definitely a way for you to support local and for you to get more involved. If you have a little bit of disposable g- income for us, it actually goes like a really long way. It helps us cover expenses and costs of just like things that we like need for, for month to month activities to help us do what we're doing now and help yeah. us do it better. Yeah. Yes. If you can imagine that. <laughs> So next up, this is actually really amazing news. So remember that I told you guys that we are going to make 300 panas soon. And we are going to be making 300 panas for our first year anniversary, which is August 1st. Panamia Club is one turning year one year old. And guess what? We're going to be celebrating with you all during Piñagria. Mm-hmm. So get ready for that. And uh, just to like let all of our panas know, right, we are also thinking of having a town hall during the first week of August to kind of like discuss what it is that our collective is doing, like things moving forward, things that need to be that, that the direction that we're going and how you guys can get more involved. Yeah, we want this to be an interactive, you know, movement. So we want to like get feedback, hear what you've liked so far, what you want us, what you want to see in the future. So definitely um, slide through, um, even if you're just like a perspective partner, like if you haven't signed up yet, but you're interested, you're not sure what this is all about. Definitely, definitely stop by. We'd love to have you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And and that is it for Meanwhile in Slow Flow. If you know of anything interesting happening in your community, definitely let us know. We make this the script like a couple days before. So <laughs> definitely <laughs> this time we did. That's yes. so generous. Yeah. <laughs> That's so generous. We make this script, we make the script like a half hour before. Yeah, yeah. So like if you have judges. events that you want to push, uh, definitely reach out to us because we're always looking. If it's if it's not coming from you, we're just out here scrolling Instagram um, to provide you with the with the news. So definitely reach out to us, uh, send us your leads, and yeah, DM us if anything. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, now that we're all caught up. Now that we're all caught up with our news. With our news. <laughs> now. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Now that we're all cut up with their news, let's just scoop all this way. Yes, this way. Right. So that you can be in the frame. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh. Now that we're all caught up with their news, we are really thrilled to introduce our guest, our first guest for this podcast, Sergio um, from Magic City Comedy. Hello. 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 And hello. I'm happy to be here. I'm super stoked. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Um, I don't know. I, were we gonna play like a a part of the? Like I did set? send you guys a clip. Um, I'm too much of a caveman to convert it to MP3. <laughs> I told you guys that beforehand. It's okay. I don't know technology. Uh, funny enough, the bit is about cavemen. So, Ooh. 
feel free to play that if you want to. Otherwise, I'll just tell you guys again, I'm really happy to be here. I love what you guys are doing. I love that you're connecting local artists. It's something that needs to be done. And any platform that can highlight that for everybody, I'm all for it, you know? I'm Thank you so stoked. much. Yeah. And and like I told you, you're our first comedian, but like we don't want you to be our only comedian. Yeah. You want many, we many want all the comedians. comedians. <laughs> oh, for sure. All I'll, the put jokes. You, I'll put you guys down 100%. I'll link you. I have a stable of comics who are frothing at the mouth to be on there. I promise. <laughs> I guarantee it. Yeah. Incredible. It was great. Yeah, I could. I mean, I, I've I've met like maybe like one other Miami comedian, but like maybe it's because I don't go to the like open mics and the circles where where it's like it's happening. I mean, if you enjoy a, a dingy bar, then you like comedy. So the two are married constantly. Every night you could find comedy in Miami. Every single night. Really? Contrary to popular belief. Yeah, a thousand percent. We have shows every single night. Not, I mean, it's like I'm not the only comedy production right, right, company right. in the city, but there's other companies. Shout out Day County Comedy. Shout out Miami Comedy. Uh, there's people out there producing shows every single night of the week. Sometimes we have two, three shows in a night. So if you're a fan of comedy and you're trying to get your fix, Miami definitely has a scene. It just needs to like kind of be brought to the light. Uh, but I think we're doing it. You know, yeah. I think the pandemic was an amazing time for us. We really like exploded <laughs> during the pandemic. Whoa. Yeah. Everybody 100%. needed a laugh. Everybody exactly. You know, you're all <laughs> cooped up in your house forever. You know, you want to like just get that giggle out. You yeah. Know? So yeah. We'll, we'll do it for you, you know, and, uh, you know, a couple beers don't don't hurt, you know. <laughs> and you were talking about like these other um, comedy production, I guess, organizations. It seems that like you guys are I, I think it's because in, in Miami there tends to be like sort of a, a competition mindset. Sure. I don't know. Like, is it the same way in comedy? Or are you guys more like kindred oh, spirits uh I, I try to take the approach of like being you know i try to be cool with everybody because like it helps everybody you know the more the more shows we have the more comics get to practice the more we elevate our craft the better we all get at it the more exposure miami gets in general as a scene for comedy you know being enemies doesn't really serve me or what i'm trying to accomplish as far as comedy is concerned so I'd rather be friends than enemies, but you know, everyone thinks differently. I, maybe everyone doesn't think like me. You know, I can only speak for myself. But uh, you know, yeah, I feel like I'm on the podium right now, giving a <laughs> politician's answer. Like, yes, I'm friends with everybody. Yes, I am. Please don't assassinate me. <laughs> but I, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do love that mindset, though. We love that mindset. Like, be friends with everybody. Make no enemies. Yeah, and yeah, we're like here we're for shouting, to, like help each other out. Yeah, we're here for shouting other people out. So you already done that, like in the That's first incredible. in the first five seconds. Yeah, so oh, you're I'm being gonna do here. some more later. Don't worry. Trust me, I got <laughs> a bunch of shout outs to give. Hell you know? yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. But you know, it's it's yeah. I think I think overall you succeed more when you're just trying to push the overall scene in general. You know, rather than just yourself selfishly. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Um, I d I did want to ask you a little bit about like um, who are you? Who are you? And how'd you get into how, comedy? How'd you get, how'd you get into comedy? Uh, well, I'm lazy, first and foremost. So <laughs> most comics don't want to have a real job. I hate working. Sorry to my new job that I just got. I also <laughs> just got a new job. They're not, I hopefully they're Congrats. not watching. Yeah, Congrats. thank you. Shout out, shout out to the, the I'm not going to shout them yeah, out. Yeah, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know what? You know, I think most comics in general, if they're being honest with themselves, we're lazy people. Uh, I love to just hang out and talk shit. As you right. can tell, um, so I mean, what other job would there be for someone? And every every most again, I'll I'll take it back a little bit. I would say majority of comics' origin story starts with a breakup, as did mine. I'm not unique in that form. Uh, so shout out to my ex girlfriend though. Thank you for breaking up with me because <laughs> it gave me the inspiration to be like, I'm gonna show her I'm good at something. <laughs> and uh, now I'm out there, you know, trying to make people laugh every night, and I'm I couldn't be happier, you know. What is it like? Getting in front because I think it's one thing to to get in front of a stage, and and like just um, not not to say that it's like not really difficult. Of course, like if you're a musician and you're performing, like that's a certain amount of like whatever. But I think with comedy, it's like even a little bit harder because the. the People have very different sense of humor. Like oh, yeah. it's 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 a lot different than than like specific genres. It's a lot more like individually. Can you make me laugh? I think you have to. You know, it takes time. Obviously, like when you first start out, you're gonna bomb and it's gonna hurt you a lot more than when you're doing it for a while because you come to understand that part of doing good comedy is you're gonna 
not everyone's going to like you. Like, it's right. just, there's no way. You'll get the majority of the room, but still, like, what psych the type of psychos every comic is, really, is you'll have the entire room rolling laughing, but there'll be, like, one person, and you'll just zone in on that one person who's not laughing. You're like, right. how come your arms are crossed? <laughs> I'm doing good right now. You show me the validation I need. So, um, yeah, you know, it, it's it's... If you're if you're a semi narcissist, comedy is great for you. That's all I could say. People always try to like come like, oh man, what you do is so nice. You you love to make people laugh. That's so honest and, and brave, you know. And it's like I do love making people laugh, but I also love people like looking at me and being like, yeah, you're the guy who makes me laugh. I love that. <laughs> That's right. You you're just like this is this, it's actually for me. Thank yeah, you. exactly. It's I try like I try to be honest me. about that. I, I don't try to <laughs> act like I'm doing some super selfless act like this is for all the people I'm taking making this sacrifice for you. <laughs> no, I'm doing it for me. Yeah, 100%. You're like this is for my ego for sure. 100%. <laughs> oh, stroke that all day. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's right. I'll, I'll, I'm like after after shows if I do well, I'm like waiting outside like uh just to be told how good I am, you know? Like I feel like I'm like like a hot chick at the prom or something like that. I'm like, aren't I? Aren't I pretty? <laughs> aren't I pretty? Come on, tell me how pretty Strategically I am. Strategically position yourself in front of the door, like, oh, I'll, goodbye. Always. A thousand percent. That's all I do. <laughs> Straight up. You know my move. You've probably been on a show. I, I can see it okay, right okay. now. Okay. Other than making yourself, you know, available for after shows, what would you say? <laughs> Why do you phrase it like I that? <laughs> I'm available <laughs> for after shows. Yeah. Make yourself after, after shows. available. What um? What other like? What advice would you have for like? I don't know, funny people in Miami that are thinking about getting into comedy. Just go to a mic. Just do it. Stop thinking about it. Get up there. Even if you only have, like, one joke, just get on stage. <laughs> like, no, seriously. Like, because, like, a lot of people will overthink it and mm -hmm. have to, like, write a whole set and rewrite it and sit in front of their mirror and rehearse it. And it's good to practice. That's a great thing. That's, you know, it's good to be prepared. But the hardest part is actually getting up there and doing it. It's so much different once you're actually on the stage. Everything's quiet and it's just your voice in front of an audience. That's that's the hardest part. That's the hardest part to get over. Getting comfortable on stage takes a long time. If you're willing to do the work and do that, then you could, you know, you could have a future and you could have a great time while you're doing it. You know, it's it's the funnest thing. And like to me, if you like making people laugh and you like being a little bit having your ego stroke, mm. there's nothing funner. Like it is the most fun you're ever gonna have. And uh, yeah, if if you want to do it, I. Just go out there and do it, man. Go hit a mic. You know what I'm saying? You might have to wait a while if you're new, cause you know open mics. Sometimes you, you 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 know you'll get there first and there'll be a raffle or something. When I when I first started comedy, I, the first open mic I ever went to was in L.A. Mm -hmm. I went to like three of them and and they were all raffle style. Like mm -hmm. it was like you put your name in a bucket and they pick it out. And somehow I was always the first guy there. Put my name in the bucket. Somehow magically I was always the last name picked. I don't know how they did it. It was a magic <laughs> trick. But I think that's just kind of like you know it, it it weeds out people who are really like committed to trying to do it and people uh -huh. who are just like gonna give up you know uh -huh. there will be roadblocks i'll tell you that but if you get past them it's totally worth it comedy is amazing I, I genuinely you know i implore you all if you want to do it do it so quit thinking about it get up there on the stage that's it here's a question for you um so you started out as a comedian right yeah. so what prompted you to like include other people in the project because um you know usually as as, as a, you're a solo performer right so like what what was the incentive to kind of like make this more of a group effort uh so like to be totally honest it was a little bit of kind of what i was describing in the beginning of comedy it's a huge grind it's tough to get booked it's hard to like uh just to get opportunities for yourself you know so i figured i'm not going to wait around for that i started my own production company of producing comedy shows myself. That way I knew, hey, at least once a, once a week I got this room, I'm gonna get on stage, you know? It was a way to make an opportunity for myself and my friends who I loved in comedy as well, you know? And uh, and then now it's just grown from there, you know? Now, now like we put on good shows and people come out, they love it, they have a good time and I, I get an opportunity to highlight comics that I really like think are dope and should be on shows that maybe they're not getting a lot of opportunity right now. But I like to try to like, you know, have an eye out for people who I think are kind of underappreciated and put them on my shows when I can. That's really cool. So you That's end up so becoming nice. like almost like a curator. For sure. For sure. I'm a bit of a curator of vibes, you could say. Definitely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does your creative process look like? Um, smoke weed and procrastinate. Uh, <laughs> I'm being completely honest. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, I'll just, I, usually I'll just jot down a bunch of ideas on my, on my, on my phone when I'm like, the best ideas come from post, post show, like, after a comedy show, when you're hanging out with other comics, just drinking a couple beers, smoking a joint or something like that, shooting the shit, having a good time, that's when the funniest 
conversations always happen. And then, you know, if a good idea comes up, I'll just take out my phone, jot it down real quick. And then when I get back home later, I'm alone. Then I'll like kind of flesh out a whole segment idea and just try to make it as like absurd as possible, basically. <laughs> yeah. Is there like a specific genre of comedy that you're like into? I don't know if that's. Um, no, I mean, yeah, there are there are styles. Definitely. There's like storytelling, you know, absurdist, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, I don't know. You know, I it's I'm so bad at like, I don't know. Am I good at describing myself? I can't tell. Honestly, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't know if I can describe my comedic style. You know, I like to try to let it speak for itself. But um, I mean, I'll tell you my favorite comic of all time is Greg Giraldo. He's dead, but he was the man. He was the like the best at roast, and he just had like really cool, insightful stuff that uh, actually made you think about stuff, but also made you laugh like you've never laughed before because it's like so true and it hits so close to home, you know. Those are my favorite type of comics, to be honest with you. I love storytelling comics. I love people. I love comics that get like really introspective, but also like spin it around and also like just make you laugh unexpectedly at like just shit that like it's it's life and it's right there but they frame it in a way that you see how absurd it is and it's hilarious exactly exactly it's th it's things that like we kind of all thought but we don't always are we're not always able to like formulate it in a way the way that the comedian can you know yeah and it sheds light on something a little bit uh now I'm, i sound like a dickhead right now i'm not gonna lie i'm like talking waxing philosophical about well, comedy uh, if you, you saw my comedy you'd be like oh no uh, <laughs> i was just talking about his dick i don't know how fucking deep that is <laughs> I mean, to be, like, I'm I'm an artist, so I'm I'm used to waxing philosophical about like stupid shit. Um, so I can like frame it and and spin it around and and like talk about things like the the complexity of whatever. But really, it 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 doesn't have to be. It, you just have to like it. Sure. At the end of the day, like that's what it is. You just like it. Exactly. No, if if I'm making myself laugh, I'm happy. That's that's yeah. really it. I'm just trying to do stuff that makes me laugh that I find funny. Uh, and then if I could bring people along for the ride, you know, I'm stoked. That's it, you know. Yeah. That's so cool. That's so cool. Um, you talked about how um, you're changing the landscape, like, in Miami, about changing the narrative, like, Miami's, like, a party city only. And so, like, I think that Annette and I, we kind of, like, are within, like, the underground scene. Um, so we see a lot of that. But how are you, like, how is Magic City Comedy changing the narrative? Well, you know, it's basically all rooted in just, showing it's it's we got to get more exposure out there but it's just trying to get exposure for comics in general so that people can know that there's other forms of entertainment in miami besides doing coke at 11 you know right like you could go and have a good time and just have a couple beers watch someone who's worked on on a, on a routine you know for years months whatever it may be and uh, you could enjoy a different type of art form, just like I'm sure you know you guys are highlighting local musicians all that type of stuff we don't really get People don't think about Miami in that way, you know? Mm -hmm. People don't think about Miami as a hub for artists and people who, who make awesome music or, or art or, or comedy or any of that, you know? So I think that, you know, with Magic City Comedy, it's giving an opportunity to uh, just shed more light on, on comedians in general in the city. And, yeah, I would love for our city to sort of shift its mindset at some point. All you fucking New York people who moved here, you guys think you, you say you like comedy? Come out to some comedy, goddammit. <laughs> Quit, quit, you know, I don't just fall in, you. don't just fall into the Miami lifestyle immediately. Don't like, don't get Miami fight immediately. Resist, you know? resist it. <laughs> yeah, go to resist comedy. The urge, for sure. Yeah. And go to some local indie shows too, you know, that's it. Damn. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that's for you. All New Yorkers. Um, all right. Switching gears a little bit. Um, sorry, sorry about bashing <laughs> the New Yorkers. No, so. no, 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 no. Everyone's okay. welcome. You know, listen, we all feel it. It happens. <laughs> it happens. It happens. <laughs> Like individually, you all, you guys can be cool, but like as a collective, <laughs> it, 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 it facilitates some 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 issues. There's some feelings for yeah, sure. sure. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> um, but yeah, do you think that comedy like plays a role in like social change, and and like how a, a city views itself and where it it can imagine itself going? Um, Specifically, damn, like you're in asking Miami. me to be so pompous and fucking <laughs> up my own ass right now. Uh, that's exactly what oh, yeah, you're, really, yeah, like, yeah. you're really like pitting me into this corner here. I, I, I don't want to, I think comedy is an amazing thing, but I don't want to like, you know, act like if, if comedians are the people who, who the public are looking to for answers, then society is fucked. Okay. That's what I'm going to say on that. You know, Fair, I think, okay. I think that That's we true. can find those answers somewhere else. 
Um, <laughs> but I do, you know, I do respect the, the, some comics have an ability to shed light on certain things for sure. But I don't think that's our role in society, yeah. you know? That's very yeah. uh, that's, that's fair. fair. We're clowns. Fair. We're here to make you laugh. That's it. You know, at the end of the day, we should just be funny. We need that. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Um, okay, so lastly, you said that you wanted to shout some people out. Sure. Oh, let's give some shout outs? Hell yeah. yeah, let's yeah, do yeah. It. Shout out my boy Albi Dominguez. At, uh, I don't know, you can follow, I forgot his Instagram, but shout out my boy Raul Colom. That's my, my podcast co host. Oh, you have a podcast? Yeah, I have a podcast. It's called Holy Chit Podcast, C H I T, Holy Chit. Uh huh. Um, who else can I shout out? Well, uh, later on when you do the other segment, I, I'm going to shout out my other boy who's not a comic. But um, <laughs> okay. shout out Winton Francis. That's my boy. Shout out Jay McCord. Shout out Sebastian Rodriguez. Shout out Chris Cilio. Shout out David Martin. Shout out fucking Jack Norris. He's in New York now, but whatever. Who cares? <laughs> shout out all the homies. You guys know who you are. And, uh, yeah, you know, go, go, go out there and watch some comedy, guys. We got it. We got it out there. It's pumping in Miami. We're, the, scene, the scene is growing a lot. Everyone um, really, you know, comics are working hard out here. And uh, I really think that in the next couple of years, you're going to be surprised to see, like, a lot of comics from Miami, like, making it big. You know, I mean, Marcelo Hernandez, I don't know if you guys I know who that him. is. Yeah, but he's him. on SNL. Yeah, and he, yeah. he's from here. You know, he came from, from here. Yeah. He was doing open mics, you know. So he does a it's lot possible. Cuban it's possible. Bits too. Yeah. Like Miami Cuban bits. Yeah, yeah, exactly, you know. So it's possible. It's possible. And Miami's going to become – more more reputable as far as comedy is concerned I, I i guarantee you in the next two to three years you're gonna see it a lot more i love that i can't yeah. wait to see that yeah. and uh don't be surprised all the comedians that you just shout out out um if you see us in your dms hell yeah there you go <laughs> that's it <laughs> join the there. directory join us and become a 100 yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll link you guys up for sure oh yeah sweet yeah. thank you so much all right um well but thank you so much for a lovely conversation it's Sergio. been a pleasure we're gonna ask you back later on but Kick if you off. want to if you want to uh follow him oh uh, shout out uh magic city pacino that's my handle my personal handle and uh also my, my obviously you know the production company is magic city comedy you can follow us there and actually i got a couple stickers for you guys oh I got, this is my shirt right here I love stickers. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. Starting the Bust the Earth movement. The Earth isn't flat. Never forget that. All right, guys? Uh, so <laughs> she I got guess big I'll, old titties. Yeah, she has some big old, <laughs> some tig old bitties. All right, so I'm, I'm out. Uh, All right. It was a pleasure. We'll Thank you guys so much. Pleasure. We'll it was see so you fun. again. Yes. We'll see you I'll, I'll make my return soon. Minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes. I don't know. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. <coughs> and now now we got Hello Max. Hey. Oh my gosh. Oh when did you get it's here? Max. <laughs> I've been uh, I've been hanging around. Come in, don't nice. be shy. Come on, nice. come on in. Like come on yeah. in. <laughs> I'm like I got no frame of reference for where I'm at, but that's okay. Here, here, I'm good. I'm good. We can scoot. <laughs> Okay. okay great, hey, great, all right. Great. I see myself now. Right. What's up? What's cool, up? Cool. What's right. up? What's up? All right. Um, for those of you who do not know, this is Max uh, from the Waxworms. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, happy to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for Absolutely. thanks for agreeing Thank to this. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Um, we love you so much, and we love your music. Thank yeah. you. We like, love you guys so much too, and everything that you guys are doing in the scene, and a lot of my oh. friends that are in the scene too, like Enrique. Uh, that you guys are working with and like reaching out to and I actually uh, one of our last shows Igor just happened to walk in and he was like Yo, didn't Damn. we play a show together and <laughs> yeah he stuck around for the rest of the, the, the set so it was pretty cool yeah. so y'all have been connecting us with a bunch of people it's been really great Ooh. oh Thank yeah hey, that's oh, yeah. awesome yeah. I think we're we're here to listen to a song of yours yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we uh, the song's called At the Party Su We Ya 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 um, it's really beachy kind of song i was listening to a lot of los zafiros uh, which are a dope cuban band um when i wrote it and a lot of jonathan richmond uh he's a really really cool guy laid back dude but yeah it, here it is i guess hit it philip <laughs>
Nice. Thank you. It's so smooth, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I yeah, loved it. One. I loved it. It's fun. You want to come back in? Yeah, yeah, You want to yeah. come back in? <laughs> Hang on. This cable's like separating me from you. <laughs> and there we go. All right. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Um, so that was incredible. Thank you. Thanks. It was so freeing. Thank Such you. a good vibe. Wow. Uh, how did that's you? What I, that's yeah. what I love about the wax worms. So just like a little bit of like history of Panamia and the wax worms. So the first time that we found out about them, who, who did we find them? We actually, actually, we met at Finca Morada. Yeah. Yes, that's where we was. met at Finca Morada at their Finca Flea. I think it was back last year, or like October yeah, or something. Yeah, it had to be. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you guys signed up. And mm -hmm. then we were looking for people to, to play in our Panalandia show, if you guys remember, back in March. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And we literally, we saw their description, and then we, we literally, we didn't hear any of your music. Yes. <laughs> we didn't hear any <laughs> of your music. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, they want to play? <laughs> Fuck yeah, yeah. Go ahead, play. Nice. It was like psychedelic rock. We for like, sure. All right. Was like, okay. Yeah, all right. No, that works. That's <laughs> Thanks cool. Thanks for the trust. That's wow. Cool. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you probably <laughs> didn't know that, but we're telling you now. <laughs> and, um, and then we saw you live, and we were like, wow. Oh no, yeah. hold on. Back up. <laughs> it was a day of, let me paint the picture for you. It was Panalandia. We had been stressed for three weeks, and it was culminating all on that day. Yeah. And we were having a great time, but at the same time, we were like this tense, like the entire night. Yes. Like, like this, like this. And then, and then y'all started playing, and we like took a and breath. Then, and then it felt good. Yeah. Nice. I literally, That's I great. sat down on the grass, and I was like, you know what? I need to enjoy this. I need to like... <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah, nice. It's like it's like an injection of serotonin. That's how you feel about your music. <laughs> nice. wow, that's great. I might quote you on that one. <laughs> I might be on our website. Yeah, <laughs> that's dope. No, thanks. I mean, the event also. I mean, they were saying they were super stressed, but like y'all did not seem that way at all, and everybody had a great time. Everybody that I spoke to, so Aww. it was great. And hosted by Goon Green at you know House Show Florida. Yeah, so they're doing great Absolutely. stuff too. Just did some awesome yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So, yeah. That was a great time. That was that, that was a really uh, formative experience for us too, because I uh, I was on guitar for that show, so we were a five piece that time because our buddy Wyatt couldn't make it, and uh, I'm always super nervous whenever I have to play guitar and sing at the same time, because I kind of just like I'll write all the songs on guitar, uh -huh. and then I play it like maybe a handful of times for uh -huh. the guys, and then they'll take it from there, and they're all like crazy good musicians, so they'll just like, you know, okay, hey, I changed this or whatever. So every time I'm playing it, I'm playing it like a little different. And uh, it's hard for me to, like, engage the crowd. So it, it felt good to hear you guys say that we were still uh, pretty laid back and chill. Because yeah. I was feeling really tense. <laughs> and, like, my hands were clammy. And I was, yeah, my hair was in my face. That's the other thing. Too. I didn't put anything up. So I kept getting just, like, a curtain of hair in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. But it was a great time. Um, I wanted to ask you how the wax worms came about. Uh, well, I had, uh, all my friends left high school and like went to colleges up north and I stayed back and I w originally wanted to do a lot You're of film. Here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from here, born and raised, uh, represent. <laughs> and, uh, we, uh, what's it called? Music was just something I could do, uh, by myself in my room and was something that I've always done. I've been writing songs since I was like 10. Um, and, uh, you know, finally I started like trying to record it just on GarageBand was showing like my friends, the ones, you know, the type of friends that like you really care about their opinion. And they were like, you know, you should do something with this. So uh, I was talking about it with Sergio uh, before coming on, but uh, Churchill's open mic literally yeah. every Monday night uh, for like maybe two months until I found people um, that I could make music with. And, uh, you know, they're not in the band anymore, but still through that and just doing the open mic circuit, got us our first gig, got us our first members, and uh, yeah, I, I actually met our now, he produces all of our stuff, he's the keyboardist uh, Alejandro Quevedo, mm -hmm. awesome dude, and I met him at our first show, he wasn't even the band yet, and yeah, now he's been the oldest one, oh. so. Uh, wh why the wax worms? Like, I've always been curious. Oh, yeah. uh, I liked how it sounded, but I was scrolling through Reddit, and I was looking, we used to be called, I was calling myself nudist enthusiast, <laughs> and um, Nobody liked that one. <laughs> 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 Everybody was like, I like your music. I don't like that at all, though. Um, and then I was like, okay. I was scrolling through Reddit, and I saw this thing about how there's this animal, the waxworms, that have this enzyme that lets them break down plastic. So, like, scientists are studying waxworms to see how they can solve the whole microplastic problem in the ocean. And uh, I was like, you know, 
aside from all of that, I was like, you know, it sounds really cool. Yeah, I was literally like, wow, that sounds dope. (laughs) Also, fire band name. Uh, (laughs) And I thought like wax like vinyl. So I was like creature of music kind of thing, like a Beatles sort of thing because they're Mm -hmm. like beat. You know. Oh, is that is that why they did that? Yeah, and oh. so you know, yeah, just thought I thought they spelled it wrong <laughs> for so long. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then earworms, you know, songs that get stuck in your head, and then wax like weed too. So, mm. yeah, I feel uh, like it's all. I feel yeah, like all, all the reasons. It. I was yeah. like, okay, nice, and reasons. also just the W, the double W. Mm-hmm. I like that. That's a yeah. that's a very artist thing, by the way. Like you just cre- you just like think of something and then you justify it afterwards. Yeah. You're like, yeah, no, it works for all of these reasons. Yeah, exa- that's exactly what happened too. I was like, man, that sounds great. Now let me find a reason to keep it. <laughs> yeah, because everybody had hated the other name so much. But yeah, understandably so. What about um, psychedelic rock? Because I feel like it's you know kind of like a genre that that like calls back to another time. And it's not something that you would like really expect in the Miami scene. So like, what was your kind of your decision to to work within like that genre, and and like how how do you see it sort of like playing out in this sort of like music scene? Yeah, well it um, so I had seen kind of like a, a mustard service show back at Churchill's. It was my first time seeing them live, and I was kind of like, oh, okay, cool, like people can do that. That's really sick, and. Um, I just started writing music and I had like rediscovered my love for the Beatles or something and I was just listening to them a bunch. I'm a huge Beatles nerd. They're like my first image of like pop culture. Like one of my earliest memories is like listening to the Beatles. Um, So it just kind of came out that way and all the songs that I used to write by myself were like also had sort of like a very 60s traditional songwriting type of feel. Like I really liked Harry Nilsson a lot. And then I was like, well, you know, let me just write it and like I'll just put it up on Bandcamp and SoundCloud and just let it do its thing. And, um, you know, it was just kind of like the music that came out of me. I started writing songs like my first two songs I put out, I I wrote about one was about being alone in my room. And then the second one was about the love for my dog, Zadie. So it was just about things I saw and the way they came out was the way they came out. But yeah. That's so great. Actually, one of my favorite songs by you is Laura. Oh, yes. nice. Laura's my favorite. I listen to it all the time. All the time. Listen to it today. It's nice. great. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely you got a skill for like writing about things you love. Thank That's you. Like, yeah. yeah. That one actually, that one came out too. I think the best way to write songs is just, you know, one session. You feel it. You have a feeling. You hang on to it and you just bang it out. And it's always good to obviously come back and like rehearse it and stuff. But uh, yeah, Laura is, is my favorite. Has to be my favorite. And it is my favorite. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, as far as uh, I, I realize that the second part of your question was like, how far do we see psychedelic rock going and stuff? There's a great psychedelic rock scene, awesome people that I've found. And um, also, I just want to like dismantle the barriers that we kind of put ourselves in, uh, in terms of like categories. Like what I liked about that Panamia Club show that we did was uh, that there was all of these different genres like kind of mixing together because we all kind of operate under the same DIY ethos anyway. We're all making our own cover art and like our own merch and we all have the same like work ethic and stuff. So I think just, you know, you don't have to stick to people in your genre. And, uh, you know, I, I think psychedelic rock and just rock in general and then just music in general, we can work with anybody we want, you know, and... Uh, and I see it going pretty far because Miami has a great scene. For sure, yeah. for sure. And by the way, Max does all of the merch and stuff yes, for I Wax do. Verms. So yeah. And album covers. And album yes, colors. Do. Yeah. So, I mean, hands off to you, friend. I mean, I know I know what that's like. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's definitely a challenge, but um, you are executing it well. Thank you. And, I mean, I'm just so excited to see, like, more stuff coming out of, out of the Wax Worms. Like, it's... Thank yeah, you. We love yeah. your music. Your marketing is also so unique. Like oh, it's it really is so DIY. Like is another reason to like fall in love. It's it seems so authentic. Thanks. You know? Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I figure uh, you you got to be lo-fi if you don't have uh, the mon- the funds, you know, the months. Yeah. Yeah. Um so just lean into it, you know. I'm just going to make it as lo-fi as can be. DIY till I die, baby. Let's go. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, thanks so much, Max, for talking with us, but don't go anywhere because we're going to invite Sergio back for our segment, Lo Que Paso Paso. Thank you. That was really good. Thank you. The new Um, segment we're trying out Yeah, it's a new segment we're trying out. Um, We got to back up a little bit so everybody can get into frame. Uh, 
So lo que pasó, pasó okay. is a new segment that we're trying out where we talk about like really cool events that we've been to recently and why we like them. So there's we didn't like come up with an order for this. So if you guys have like a something I'm you want to. Gonna, I'm going to go the uh, a different route. I'm going to shout out an event that's coming up, actually. All right. Nice. Uh, my homie, uh, Robbie Ramos and the South Beach Star Club. They got an event coming up. This Friday, April 28th, it's a block party. It's Miami Beach Shark Week. Uh, I think it starts at 6 p.m. It's right across the street from um, the corner in that lot. They, they, they paint the giant mural of like a giant uh, great white shark, and it says South Beach Shark Club and all this stuff. And it's promoting their documentary that they dropped. Uh, they have a documentary. It's out on Amazon right now. Amazon or Hulu? Fuck, I don't remember. I believe it's... It's one of the two. It's Amazon or Hulu. You guys can stream it for, t I think it's like 10 bucks. Um, I'm, not, I'm not their PR guy, but I'm doing my best here. <laughs> but it is a sick event that's going to be going down. They're going to have DJs, vendors. Uh, you can take pictures in front of it. They're going to have drinks going on. It's going to oh be yeah. sick. And you should definitely watch that movie. If you're into Miami history in the 70s, 80s, 90s, everything Miami, it's all about shark fishing in Miami and also just the city in general. Super dope documentary. Definitely check it out. That's really cool. Yeah. And I, uh, I actually remember reading about that. On the Miami New Times. It was the head of the New Times. Yeah. Shout out to my dog, bro. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's great. We've been we've been trying to get the Miami New Times to pay attention to us for a minute. Like, hey, we exist. I could get Robbie on this podcast. <laughs> Let me know. I'll get, I could get Robbie on here in a second. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Call him, Robbie. <laughs> yeah. Like Robbie, you watching? Do you have Robbie, like Do you have um, an event that you've been to though recently? That I've been to recently, um, I'm not gonna lie to you. No, I don't. No. I was in Europe for for a while. Uh, right, so makes I sense. Can't, I can't think of anything. Makes right sense. Now. Make yeah. it. That's yeah. fair. Nice. That's, okay. fair. That's, okay. fair. That's, That's fair. That's okay. fair. I just went to the um, Paradise's two year anniversary. Paradise Books and Bread. Real. Yeah, Us we were too. also there. Y'all were there too. Yes. yes. They, everybody was there, man. Dude, yes. we, we could not stay because we got. What rained time out. did y'all show up? Yo, oh, you got rained out? Yeah. yeah people, that so didn't So heavily. Like, it was yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I took, one, like, my dog there. For the first time, I took him outside. He was just drenched. Oh. The entire, he was just so drenched. But it was really and nice to see so many dog too. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know what that's like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but yeah, that was that was great. I mean, and they're awesome people. I love that place. Yeah. Uh, go there super often. And then uh, there was another event that uh, we played at. This band, Himalayan Salt Band, uh, led mm. by this dude Isidro, super super chill guy. He's putting together. All of them are putting together shows at um, Salt Bar. They're calling them Salt Bar Nights, and it's at Sandbar in uh, Miami Beach, North Miami Beach. Really sick stuff. Um, it's hosted in the back part, the Sandbox, which is just a great venue. Search, you know. We're, we're it's bonding over that. 100%. Yeah. Um, and, nice. uh, yeah, those those events, they're doing great stuff. Yeah. That's cool. That's, That's cool. cool. Um, this past Thursday, I went to an event hosted by Goon Green. Um, it was DJ Academy. So, basically. <laughs> this is where we're going to tie back. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right, we're tying back. So, anyway, I tried my hand out at DJing for the first time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was awesome. I named myself DJ Kaile. <laughs> like, Kaile a la fiesta. Hey. But, yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's a good name. It was really, really cool, and there was, like, maybe, like, 20 to 25, maybe 30 people there, so there were, like, 15-minute slots where you could, like, practice. They gave you, like, a little bit of rundown of, like, what to do, like, the, all the different, stuff, like, things, knobs, the, all those things. Um, but, yeah, it was really successful, and I think you guys, I think you're going to host another one. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So definitely look out for that yeah. if you want to just try something new. And That's it was at, yeah. it was at the bridge. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that venue, but it's like literally like at the base of a bridge. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right before Wynwood. It's like the bridge. Like yeah. like yeah, the I've edge of Little oh, Haiti. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh it's a it's a really nice venue. They they support like a lot of um really cool sort of indie events. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so like that that's really nice. Yeah, the other event that they had there recently was a film festival. Oh my gosh, yes. Seven eight six Crea. Seven eight six film festival mm -hmm. hosted by Casa Crea. Which is Omega really Spit. cool. And it was all local filmmakers and that shit was incredible yeah nice. yeah incredible yeah. that so space seems wait. really good for like a film screening too yeah. it's like a, it's such a good gallery space it's mm -hmm. really cool it was yeah. it was what's the name of the venue again uh the bridge the bridge okay the bridge. Yeah. we'll check it out yeah and then Sounds the cool. next uh th the next event is actually mine right mine um <laughs> it was actually very like spontaneous because Gladi and I had a meeting with um one of the people that in in sort of like the directors 
whatever um, at MOCA. So mm -hmm. it was, so the MOCA, the Museum of Contemporary Art in North Miami, and they usually have like events with, with artists and stuff. Usually like the, their most popular one is Jazz Night, but yesterday they had one um, with, a, with an artist that is like a resident currently. So if you drive by MOCA right now in North Miami, you'll see like a giant inflatable unicorn. Nice. <laughs> Um, and it was like a unicorn. Unicorn on top of a jet ski. That's that's yep. what it is. A oh unicorn right. on top of a jet ski. Mm -hmm. So the artist who made that is also in a band called Niña y Más. Niña y Más. Okay. And Niña y Más uh, is a pop girl reggaeton or pop femme reggaeton band nice. that I saw play for the first time at Three Points, mm -hmm. and they're really cool. They're nice. really they're very. They sound sick. Yeah. They're so, yeah. You would love them. <laughs> you would absolutely love them. They don't take themselves seriously. They're just like they're just hype men. They're like, just literally just so hype. Cool. Niña yeah. Y Más. Okay. Like so for the and at all of their shows, they buy like a sheet cake. And they just give away like pieces of cake at the end of the show. That's amazing. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm done with that. Is, yeah. it, is it the same kind of cake at every show? Do you know? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I actually am not a very big fan of cake. Yeah, same here. That's why I was like, is it a style of cake I like? <laughs> no. I mean, just the, just the fact like, that no, they do it. I'm gonna it. have to eat just it. Just the fact that they do it, I'm like. <laughs> That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. And then you're also like shaking ass, which is great. Yeah. Uh, and this was like literally in front of the museum. So we had this meeting and then we came like afterwards. Um, the director invited us to like come and stay at the event. And it was it was so cool. Like mm -hmm. it was a, a Niña y Más concert. And then yeah. it also like they had um sort of like a sort of like a plan going on like they they had like a like a funny basketball game where they like everybody was dressed in like jerseys that said nina and nice. they had like a referee in like the tightest shorts <laughs> <laughs> and they had like this huge inflatable like basketball and they were like inviting like kids in the audience to just like throw it at this like like super small hoop it was it was just no, it like really dope yeah. Yeah. it was yeah. a yeah. fun time so fun. they had Hell technical yeah. difficulty and then they just invited the entire crowd to like a slow fight like a slow slow motion, motion fight? fight that's so yeah. good yeah. which i thought was really cool creative. and they yeah. also told like they told them to talk to somebody that you didn't know and tell them how your parents met <laughs> Damn, that's they got, they got some creative like real yeah. crowd work part-time yeah. yeah. part therapy like yeah. all right yeah. that's sick <laughs> hell yeah, yeah. No, it was, yeah. a, it was a really cool event. It'd be really good at, like, organizing play dates <laughs> or, like, babysitting, I feel. Yeah. It'd be really cool. <laughs> no, they're, they're a really cool group. Um, please become a part of our directory. We definitely want you. <laughs> yeah, we'll tag you. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Absolutely. Um, well, the ha this has been Lo Que Paso. Um, and thank you guys for participating. Like, this was our first time doing this segment, and mm -hmm. I feel like it actually came out really, really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you guys want to see more of this segment, definitely let us know. Feedback is great. And, and yeah, that's what's up. So if uh, for an upcoming episode, our next episode is going to be on the 5th? On the 5th. Yes. August 5th. August 5th. Correct. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. Yeah. So, it, like, make sure to subscribe. We're on YouTube. We're on Spotify. These guys. These guys are on Spotify. Yeah, we're everywhere. You can Google us. We'll come up. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm literally knows. just call my name out and I'll appear. I promise. Yeah. You look up the Wax Rooms, it'll even tell you. It'll be like the Wax Rooms Band, Wax Rooms Miami. Yeah, we're there. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, wonderful. Well, this has been the episode. Thank you so much. Definitely follow us on, you know, Apple Music or Spotify, YouTube. And then also, if you like this, uh, share it with a friend. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Follow these ladies. They're doing good work. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you. Aw, thanks. Thanks. All right, bye. Uh, all right, bye. 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 bye.